Hello and welcome to Master and Market. My, my name is Grady Arno. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions here at Duke Speedway School of Business. And today I'm excited to have Peyton Brooks from the class of 2021 from MQM. So uh, thank you so much for being here, Peyton. If you want to start with an introduction, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, thanks for having me, Grady. Um, Peyton Brooks, um, I am currently working at a company called Informed IQ. Uh, after so actually my second job post MQM, uh, out of the program, I went, uh, did a short stint at American Express on the credit risk side of things, uh, and then wanted to try my hand in the startup space. So now I'm a PM at Informed IQ. We do, it's an AI ML company, uh, loan origination automation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're really excited to talk to you and get a little bit more information about what your day-to-day -day looks like. So let's start with that. What does your day-to-day -day look like at Informed IQ? It's an interesting question. Um, us being a Series A startup, uh, it's very different on a day-to-day -day basis. It depends on the cycle of when we have clients coming in, um, in reality. But kind of generically speaking, um, I'm probably a month in to being a PM. I, I transitioned from a business analyst role. Probably easier if I start there. Um, as a business analyst, I came in sitting between sales and product, uh, kind of doing kind of the sales op stuff. But it was a quarter of my job. And then the other part of it was more the product analytics side of things. So more of like the SQL. Uh, and then I had the subject matter experience with just understanding what the product does in the AI ML space. So I sat at, uh, at the product side as well. And what that meant was uh, pulling data on product performance for different clients, us being in the document automation space. It's, it was very specific to kind of what documents all of our clients were wanting us to automate. So it's, do we support these type of documents? Uh, to what extent do we support them? Uh, and, and what can we automate from them? What, what verifications can we automate from them? Uh, so that's really kind of what my job started as. Um, now it's getting to the point where I'm doing a lot of gap analysis uh, on the current product for like big POCs that we're running for a lot of these banks. Um, so it's iterating quickly prioritizing engineering sprints, things of that nature. Uh, and then the outlook part of it is really like, okay, what's, we're planning our 2023 roadmap right now. What do we have coming down the pipeline? What clients do we have coming in? And, and how do we, how do we want to not only be able to support them, but also progress the product and, and, and kind of hop into different markets as well as we grow. So that's kind of it kind of on a different day-to-day -day basis. It's not always the same. It's depending on where we are in the cycle with our with our large clients. Um, but I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah, that's perfect. And you use some good technical jargon, which a lot of people might know about, but could you explain what PM means and what uh, POC means? Yeah, PM, product manager, uh, and then POC is a proof of concept. So with, with a lot of these, we're in the financial space, so every large bank is going to require a proof of concept to test our product before they sign a multi-million dollar five-year deal, uh, whatever that is, whatever that is. Um, so we, we they run tests on our product, and uh, because we're we're very configuration based uh, and very um, customized, uh, it takes a while to get that kind of set up, and then also get through the cycle of some of these sales cycles are a year plus long with a lot of these larger banks. So it's they make us jump through a bunch of hoops, one of them being a POC. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for explaining this. So as a PM, what uh, what makes you excited every day to go to your job? What you mentioned going from a corporation to a startup, what makes mm -hmm. you excited about your role at Informed IQ? For me, what kind of uh, initiated the switch was two things and what I look for in work. At, one of them being impact. What like can I have individual impact on and at a big company like American Express it was a fantastic company I didn't feel that I was having as much of an impact personally as I would have wanted to so going to a 50 person it was like it was 45 or it was like the 40th 40 something person hired now we're at 55 my individual impact is I can see it's tangible um I'm working on things that are like living and breathing and 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 improving every day. And I'm having a, a small hand in that, right? So that was a big reason why I ended up switching. Um, the other reason was learning. Um, I'm learning a heck of a lot more at a small company, right? I, I, I think I mentioned earlier, I, I started 
uh, as a business analyst sitting in between sales and product. Like there would be some days, like I was the one managing our website, which is like a very like weird thing and not something I ever thought I would be doing, but somebody needed to do it and it needed to get done. And I submitted our, not our patent application, but our uh, trademark for our, our logo and things like that. Like I learned these like very niche things that I never thought. And then I was proofreading NDAs and proofreading and redlining contracts and um, things of that, like uh, master service agreements and uh, and order forms, which I never would have done before. And not something that I necessarily learned in MQM, but it's all like, like now I understand that. I never would have had that at American Express. Um, so that's learning was definitely a big thing. You had to wear a lot of different hats in the startup space as opposed to working in corporate. Absolutely. And managing all those things that are going on. So you have the opportunity to not only have your hand in one thing, but there's a lot of things going on at once. So could you talk to us about how you manage multiple priorities? A lot of prioritization. Um, that's a lot of what the product job um, actually is. We have a laundry list of things that either sales asks us to implement or clients ask us to implement. And there's like, a, it's kind of like 50% of my job now is, is really, we have a, a list of 100 tickets that we have requests for. And then you have to really kind of assign a level of effort, but also how much lift is it going to, uh, how much lift, if we, if we commit engineering time to this particular ticket, like on just on the engineering side, not even on like my personal to-do list side, how much is this going to lift our automation rates? And, and how does this back up into our, like our OKR process objective and, and key results? So that's a whole kind of like part of the job. Um, you have to learn how to say no to certain things, right? Which I'm learning and it's a muscle that I'm I'm like used to, like if somebody asks me to do something, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in reality, like we can't do that because in reality, what they're asking for isn't the best thing to help us reach our OKRs right? And, and really improve the product for the long term. So learning how to, um, it's both client management uh, and as well as kind of management of different functional groups that are asking you different things. Um, that's kind of on like a company, kind of like my personal job side. It's all about prioritization, but what we want to implement next. Um, then on the personal side, it's kind of like the similar context. It's the same muscle. It's just on my personal to-do list side. I have a list of 20 things that I have to get to. And once we get off this call, like I'll just read through that list and figure out which ones are the heavy hitters and which ones I need to do first. Um, and then I just kind of keep going from there. Is there a specific way that you like to organize that list? Do you have a specific software you're using or just a running list? I use Asana. Um, it's kind of a running list. Um, and then with really big things, like I have like my whiteboard and then I'll put like there are OKRs on the whiteboard. It's something that I've done. So one of the things and I'm trying, I'm in the process of learning this right now um, is any ask that comes through the pipeline, I'll, I can look right here. Is, is that going to help me hit my OKRs for this quarter or this year? If the answer is no, punt it to the backlog. We can get to it later. Or when we change our OKRs and revisit that next quarter, like we can take that in, as input. Maybe we want to shift our OKRs. Maybe they're the wrong OKRs. But I know that that's my guiding light. And if it doesn't help me reach my OKR for the quarter of the, the year, I punt it. So that's kind of like some, some tools that I've used or approaches. But like on the tool side, Asana and then just my whiteboard. And OKR stands for? Yeah, objective and key result. Um, but it comes down from our CEO. Uh, he has overall objectives uh, and those key results kind of uh, punt down to all of the functional groups. And then each functional group will have kind of the key result is their objective to obtain. And then their key result, they punt it down to their uh, subordinates and it kind of it trickles down from there. because you get more and more specific as you go down. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for explaining that. So. Uh, talk to me about how you decided on Informed IQ. There's a lot of startups up there, a lot of job opportunities for someone like you with your skill set. So how did you decide about Informed IQ? And I know this is your second role since graduating from Fuqua, but what was your goal coming out of Fuqua and how has that maybe changed or did this, per, this, uh, this role meet your goals? Yeah, I'll do, I'll answer the second question first. Um, I knew coming into Fuqua, and MQM specifically that I wanted to get into the startup space. Um, I just didn't really know how. Um, 
I explored it when we were in the program and when I was recruiting, realized that I'll, that startups need people that are basically plug and plays. And I, I didn't have a more background. I didn't have job experience before Fuqua. I came in directly from undergrad. So it was harder to get into like a really, a really, really high functioning startup, which is what I'm in now. Um, so my plan was to go corporate, get some experience. And then if an opportunity arises to transfer into the startup space, I, I'd take that opportunity. Um, and that was kind of my plan all along. I didn't think it would happen this fast. I thought it would be years before it happened, but it something kind of just fell into my lap. It was a, it was a buddy from my undergrad who actually knew, knew our chief revenue officers, family friends with him, and they were looking for a role. Um, and I ended up applying it. It ended up being a perfect fit. Um, and the reason I chose Informed IQ is twofold. Um, the leadership team is phenomenal. Phenomenal track record. One of our co-founders, Magdalena Yaseel, was like the first investor in Salesforce. Has She sits on the board of SoFi today, among many other companies. Um, and she's founded and exited multiple startups. So she has a phenomenal track record. Our CEO was um, head of product growth at Lyft years ago when they were scaling. And then Zynga as well helped them scale. Um, he has a phenomenal track record. Um, the team was fantastic. Our engineers are fantastic. Um, and then, so the team was fantastic, which is what I loved about it. And then, which means I could learn, which is really what I was looking for. Um, and then the second one was the product is phenomenal. Um, we very rarely lose out on opportunities. Um, it's a very unique solution with a unique approach relative to some of our competitors in the space just for like some business context background. The basis of our product is OCR, optimal character recognition. Uh, and a lot of the other companies, they are just OCR. They'll just extract values off the page and send it back to the lenders, right? A little bit. I mean, I'm getting into our pitch, but it, it's beneficial to understand. Um, what we do is very verifications based. We know what the lenders are doing with those numbers, how they calculate income based on those numbers and what verifications they're actually running, what the state specific doc fee thresholds are that uh, that we can run verifications on all their documents. All of the other OCR vendors, then there are genuinely OCR vendors, they just pass data back to the lenders and then the lenders have to figure out how to parse through it. That's like the AI ML part of ours is, is we figure out how to classify each field and know exactly where to put it and, and know how to configure it for our lenders credit policies. So the fact that we didn't lose we rarely lose. Our clients are some of the largest banks in the country. Ally being our lighthouse customer. Um, they're actually on our cap table. And then um, Westlake and then Capital One are also two of our lighthouse customers. So you, you have those three banks being, being with us for the past three, four or five years. It makes it a lot easier to go after the larger banks, the Chases, the Wells Fargo's. Um, and if you have those large banks, you're, I mean, you're golden from a from a client perspective because you can land and expand. So that was kind of like my thought process of of taking the job here. Awesome. And cap table, what does that mean? Uh, they are an investor, like a strategic investor. They've helped us build the product from the very beginning. Great. Thank you. So you mentioned this is your second role. You started at American Express. How was the job search process leaving the program and how did it differ the second job that you founded at Formed IQ? Say the first part of your question again. Yeah, so you this is your second role. So could you talk a little bit about how your job search out of the program was and then how it changed for your second role? A lot. It's a lot easier to look for a job when you have a job, um, especially I, I know because I didn't have a job out of um, before MQM, it was kind of my first role. I mean, you, you know that process being uh, conversating with a lot of the students currently in the program, um, a lot easier once you have it. I heard from a lot of advice from when I was uh, a student and during the recruiting process, I heard a lot of students that they got their first job because it was a job and it paid well and it paid enough. But it wasn't exactly they got into it and it wasn't exactly what they wanted it to be. And that's kind of what I like. I was in that situation. It wasn't exactly I love the company. M Amex is a great company, nothing against them at all. It just wasn't a good fit for me. And that's what a lot of students realize with their first job. 
a lot easier to get a second job once you have a first job. Even like, I mean, shoot, I think I did only did a nine month stint at American Express. So when you're when you're like that early in your career, like I was, a lot harder to get your first one. I mean, I did 20 interviews um, and Amex was the best thing that that kind of uh, fell into my lap. Uh, and I interviewed, I think, at two to three different companies when I was starting the job search and ended up loving and falling in love with this job. Um, so it's a lot easier but once you have a job. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And that's what we always talk about is it's not necessarily the first job that you're going to see yeah. the biggest return on investment or that it's not going to be your dream job, but it's going to be that's going to lead you to your dream job or uh, to that return on investment. So uh, love to hear that. And you talked a little bit about uh, being a small startup. So there's around 55 people. You're in the 40s uh, when you were hired as an employee uh, and having a great C-suite. So what is yeah. the office culture like and how does it compare to any of your previous experiences? Definitely more results driven, um, without a doubt, results driven. We're, we're a Silicon Valley startup. So it's a lot different than a lot of the high flying startups. Like we don't have, like you see these massive benefit packages, not that they don't pay us well, they pay us very well, but that's kind of what I'm getting at is like the, you see all of these companies spending a bunch of money in the startups and, and spending all of their runway. We are very results oriented. And the fact that if we provide results, we list out accordingly, like we're going to get our bonuses. And that's kind of like our benefits, uh, of course, like healthcare and all that good stuff. But that's kind of the culture that he's made, uh, Justin Wicked has made, has been we're results driven. And that's that. And if you drive results, you're going to get paid well. Um, and so where it's kind of like a work hard, play hard culture, I, I work a lot more than I did at Amex, but I love the work that I do. Uh, and that's kind of the culture that he's made as well, um, as opposed to being in a corporate environment. I personally was results oriented and results driven, but a lot of my peers were like, OK, this is a there's thousands of people at this company. I can sit and float and not make and not make a lot of progress uh, and be fine. Uh, and that's maybe good for some people if you want to like at a certain point, I'm going to have to do that. I can't work 80 hours a week for very long. But at the, this point in my life, I didn't want that. Um, so that's like the difference in culture that I've seen kind of like glaringly. Um, less politics, for sure. Corporate had, at least in my experience, the political like game that I didn't love. Um, going back to like being results oriented. I do not necessarily have, I'm a PM now, a product manager. I do not have the track record to have the title that I have now, but I got it because I drove results being in the role as a business analyst. So it was just kind of natural. I think it was nine months, nine to 10 months before I ended up getting this promotion. So that was, I think that kind of answers your question about culture. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. And I was going to ask a little bit more about the promotion. So you talked a little bit about being results oriented, but was there anything else that you did or that you showed to the company that allowed you to get to that promotion? Yeah, I, um, it kind of started like six months ago. Um, it wasn't necessarily like it was a kind of a snap and I was promoted. It was, it started six months ago when I, um, was talking to one of our directors of product. Um, and I asked him kind of like picking his brain. I mean, I've become friends with him. Um, he's now my new boss. But I kind of asked him, I want to eventually over the long run, get into the product space. Um, how do you recommend me doing that? And he what he told me and he was a he was a machine learning engineer before kind of he was one of the top five uh, first five hires. So he helped build the product from scratch. He was an ML engineer. And what he said was in his free time, he would just do product oriented things with our CEO, Justin. Obviously, Justin's not as accessible as he was when there was only five employees. Um, but now what I've done, I was starting six months ago, all of my free time would go to, I would ping Jot and what do you need today? What do you like? What, what can I help you with to help you kind of focus on higher level things, things that I can't do, but things that he should be doing and getting out of like the weeds of the product analytics and querying SQL for different questions that he needs. And it, it 
doesn't work because we changed our, our ETL. And it's like, where the hell is this field going at? And I'm, instead of him having to do all of that, I'm doing that and going to our data team and figuring all of that out for him. So in that, I understood and learned what questions he was asking and why he was asking them. I was doing all of the grunt work, doing all of it, but I was learning a ton. And at that point, I was doing it for six months. I was working a ton for him. I was doing two jobs at one time. My boss was well aware of it. But then it became very easy when my director went up to Justin, our CEO, and was like, hey, we're about to ramp up. We have a bunch of proof of concepts coming up with these massive banks. I need help. And he wants to switch over to the product team, find his backfill and get him over there. And that's that process was five, six months ago. Um, and that was it was kind of just an iterative kind of like eventually slowly moving over um, until I officially found my backfill and, and kind of made the full transition. That's great. That's really exciting to hear that you put in that hard work and it really paid off. So what is uh, one thing that you either learned or took away from the MQM program you know, on the career side, the academic side that you really apply to your day to day um, or even your career search? I think I always go back to the real world aspect of the program. Um, I think back to a lot of the case studies that we did, whether it be technical or non-technical. Um, we a lot of the professors always ask the question of like, why does this matter or who cares? And like the scoping of a lot of these things, what business impact could this particular finding or this analysis actually have? Um and I find a lot of that, I mean, that's exactly what gets asked on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, right, that process of me, an ask coming down from a client, how is this ask going to affect my business and, and affect my OKRs, my objectives and key results? Like answering, asking that question is a muscle that started a lot within the MQM program with the way that, that our professors kind of structured our case studies and all the work that we did was why does this actually matter? What business impact does it drive? Um, so that I think is like the, the main thing. That's great. Uh, and that's why we do the case state based model. And I think that's a really important thing that you can take with you, uh, mm -hmm. forever. So last question, what's one piece of advice that you'd give to someone, whether they're looking to get into the startup space, looking to go into a project manager role, or even looking at a graduate program? I would, mm -hmm. Graduate program, I would say it, let's just say this, I would not have gotten my Amex role, most likely, um, without MQM. And I would have looked a lot worse on paper. Um, they let people love like my boss probably wouldn't have thought as highly of me if I didn't come in with the Duke experience with the MQM and being able to understand an AI ML product. Um, and I was able to talk the talk, like very surface level, um, which helped a lot through the MQM program. So I think if you don't have a technical degree, but you want to get into kind of that space, the MQM program is like the perfect merge between analytics, uh, machine learning, especially, and, and then the business side of it as well. It's a, it's a good segue into product without going the engineering route, going the pure uh, CS route. I'd say wanting to get into product, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm a few months in to, to my role. Um, if you want to get in, I mean, I would do exactly kind of similar to what I did. Get into a role that matches your skill set now at a company that you like, um, and then just try as hard as possible and put yourself in a position to interact with the product team. Um, and it's a natural progression if you consistently want to do work for, like if you make somebody else's job easier, they're going to want you on their team, um, regardless of what functional group you want to get into. So that's kind of what I did. Um, without going like in traditional, like starting in engineering and then switching over to product, which is a lot of what tech companies do, or like going the traditional MBA route uh, and then hopping into product. Um, that's what I'd say if you want to like break into PM. There's a, um, oh shoot, there's a guy that uh, is, a, is a 
is an MBA alum. He's at LinkedIn right now from Fuqua. Uh, and he's phenomenal, does a lot of advice. I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. I talked to him, I connected with him. Um, but he was he was a resource for me a lot as well, setting up product roadmaps and things like that. Um, it's going to annoy me. I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll send you his name after, but he was, he was a great resource for me. Great. That's awesome. Well, that's great to see how the network of FICO really has been impactful in your career, um, what, even outside of just the MKM program. So thank you so much, Peyton, for being here today. I uh, really appreciate your insight. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to this episode of Mastering Market.